What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul. Liberty Hill Comics and Cards. Continuing series, working on this Detective Comics number 59. We have removed the cover of this important book, Second Appearance of the Penguin. And we had a bunch of tape. Um, we removed the tape. We removed the tape residue. Check out earlier series for that. And today we're going to talk about our progress on the color touch removal. And boys and girls, this is why people avoid books with color touch. If you look at restored books, there's two things that are really tough. One is trimmed books, because you just can't add that material back on once it's been trimmed. The other is color touch. Can you remove color touch? Sure. But... It comes at a cost. It always comes at a cost. It's not nothing. There's nothing free in the world, and especially not <laughs> color touch removal. Um, so we are making serious progress on our color touch removal, but um, it has come at a cost, and I will show you what that cost has been. Um, so we had color touch here here on the blue here on the green here we had color touch down this line here 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 we had some red color touch on the up here um the blue the green the red is largely gone the black has been stubborn you'll note here that we still have so this line was black color touched We've removed that largely, but it's not white. It's like a pale indigo. So it's not completely removed. And I think you can see that probably better illustrated from the back. Here, we still have evidence of the color touch. It's a faded indigo, but it's along this crease line in this spot here and around this hole where we still have evidence from the back of color touch. But as I mentioned, it's come at a price, right? So what has the price been? Well, first and foremost, this exterior. We've really faded out these colors, okay? Now, I knew that that was likely to happen. Um, I made a conscious decision, as I've explained in the earlier videos, that that was an acceptable trade-off to me. I would give up the intensity of these colors for avoiding a purple label. Um, again, th this is why unless you are willing, unless you have the stomach to do this kind of stuff, just avoid, avoid color-touched books. Um, also, in addition to the fading there, We've had all this color bleed through on the back, right? All this blue, the red here and here. This is from the regular ink of the book, and it's bled through here in an unsightly way, okay? So we still don't have the color touch completely removed, and we have this problem that maybe we can improve. But again, we've made progress, but it's come at a cost. So what are we going to do today? We are going to continue to work on this color touch and try to minimize it. My goal at this point, I think the front cover has the color touch minimized to the extent that um, it's almost not going to be called color touch. Not quite, but almost there. The biggest concern that I have is this Versa. This is very obvious. So what I want to do is I want to try to drive the rest of this ink out of here. But rather than a full aqueous bath, I'm going to try a little bit more um, surgical of a method. So the materials we're going to use today, this is blotter paper. I'm going to use this blotting paper underneath here. And I'm going to have small pieces of blotting paper that I'm going to use on top as well, okay? I have a little bit of isopropanol. 
and I have a syringe. This is a three mil syringe with an 18 gauge needle. The needle is, um, I think an inch and a quarter long. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to very kind of surgically apply this in the areas that still have the color touch showing and then apply pressure. I want the pressure to be such that we're gonna pull the ink out of that area and or drive it into the paper underneath. So one of the things I need to check Is it driving it into the paper underneath appreciably? Do I need to move it? So we're going to continue that process until we can pull the rest of this color touch out. and it appears to be working. The reason why we wanna use this blotter paper is because we do not want this ink carried deeper into the paper of the comic book, right? That would just spread that blurry color touch line that's on the back out even further, and we don't want that. Also, remember that while you're doing this, the paper is wet. Um, isopropanol is a polar solvent. It's not as polar as water. And someday we'll go over the T's chart and we'll talk about dispersion forces and polar and um, nonpolar solvents, but for today's purposes, all we need to know, or all you need to know is that this is isopropanol. Isopropanol is not as polar as water, but much more polar than the other um, organic solvents we used. And the reason why I'm using it here is because I suspected that the, the inks used for this color touch would have good solubility in it. Um, but because, as I started to state, because it is a polar solvent and, and not, you know, too dissimilar from water, it does the old wet paper is weak paper. Um, much more so than, like, say, hexane or even the xylene. Um, those, th those organic solvents, when they wet the paper, they don't make it weak in the same way that water makes the paper weak when it wets it. So one of the things I want to be very conscious of here is that I'm, I'm definitely, the, the paper is definitely weak while I'm doing this. And so I'm just, I'm never going to rub on this paper. Um, it's just going to be press up and down. You see how much of that we're removing? All we're going to do is press up and down with the blotter paper. No rubbing, no other tools. Because isopropanol is going to wet the paper in a way that is similar to water, which means it's going to make it, the paper itself, quite fragile. If you watch any other YouTube comic book conservationists, you've heard wet paper is weak paper. I know Rick Morgan likes to say that. I think uh, Jerry the Jitterbug has been known to say that a few times as well. And it might be time to get a new small piece of blotter paper. It might be time to move this book on the blotter underneath as well. 
All right. So we're getting a fair amount of ink lifted. Hopefully that is somewhat surgically, mostly the color touch ink. But again, at this point, we know that we're gonna probably lift some other inks in order to get this color touch ink off. So that is kind of what it is. That's part of the cost we have to pay. And again, that's why if you don't have a stomach for this, just avoid color touched books because this is part of the drill. Oops. I got that quick enough. There's a pretty good example, I guess, actually. So I, I dropped on Robin's shoulder there some of my isopropanol, and I just blotted it really quickly. And you see, it really didn't lift any green from there. But this area where we're concentrating, where we have all this color touch, it's actually still lifting quite a bit of color. And... Um, I don't know if that's because it's more saturated with the isopropanol or because those are the color touch markers and um, and the ink from them is more soluble in the isopropanol than, than the inks originally used to print the book. Hard to say, but for sure, we are lifting it. We're achieving our objective here. Again, at what cost? Some people would say, you had a beautiful book, so what, it was color touched, you should have just left it that way. And that's your prerogative. I certainly understand the argument. It looked better, again, certainly to the casual observer. But like we talked about, I'm a bit of a purist in that I want I want an honest book when I'm done. I would rather have a beat up honest book than um, than a color touch book that you know looks better but is in fact uh, has less long term appeal. So. I'm going to continue to do this off camera. I'm going to check the other side. I think I need to remove this very carefully because I think it's kind of sticking to this blotting paper. So I want to remove it very carefully. And really, I'm, I'm interested to see how much that, that uh, color bleed on the other side has maybe improved or has it gotten worse with what we've just done. So I'm going to do that off camera and we'll come back and show you results. All right, y'all, we got our cover to Tech 59, second appearance of the penguin, and we're getting at this color touch, and we're getting there. We're getting there slowly but surely, and as I mentioned, there's a cost to it. We've lost some vibrancy in these colors here, and we've got some bleed through on this with the blues and the reds coming through, but look how improved this area is. So we're continuing. This, re remember, was a dark black line. Now it's very faded indigo and blurry and almost gone. So we're getting there. We're going to continue. So recall that the last time we used isopropanol and I used blotter paper behind the book and we, we put blotter paper on top as well. I have a collection of little strips of blotter paper that I use for these purposes and I'm going to just pick one out that is like appropriate dimensions right there is good. This is blotter paper that's, this is all used blotter paper that I've cleaned and then um, put back into to use. All right. 
and I'm going to have one of these that I'm going to use on top like that, right? Now, what I've done is I've switched to this. We had isopropanol. This is now xylene. And the reason I'm doing this with xylene now is because the ink that was used for the color touch, that ink consists of a whole pile of different pigments carried in a carrier. And you may remember from at some point in your science class, you may have done a chromatography test where you take a piece of paper and you put, you know, one dot there from a marker and then you just set it in some solvent and the solvent gets pulled up, grabs the dot, carries the dot with it. And then you have all these rings of all the different things. And even like black ink will have red in it and multitude of different colors, right? And so each of those pigments has a different solubility and has um, different properties. Some of them will move well in the um, isopropanol. Some move well in water. Some move well in xylene. So we're going to continue to hit this. Just we're going to change our um, we're going to change our solvents. And we're just going to keep at it. Until we can lift. As much of this as possible. My goal is to have the inside of that not have that blurry blue line anymore. There you see that we didn't move a lot of it. And it might be that we don't spend a lot of time with xylene because these inks don't have a lot of solubility in xylene and that's okay. By the way, xylene does, is volatile and is pretty noxious. When I use these really small quantities, it doesn't bother me. But that's why you see me using this literally in a syringe and I'm putting like one drop on the paper. With this, I think you can get away with just some decent ventilation and not a respirator, not inside a hood. But if you use xylene at concentration, at, at volume, with a large surface area, the volatility of it, it'll give you a headache. It'll definitely mess with you. So be smart about that. Um, if you recall from earlier videos, I put this whole cover in hexane, okay? Hexane, not nearly as volatile and does not give off nearly the nasty um, gases and as, as, it's, uh, as it is uh, evaporating. Um, I only, I'd never do a full bath like that of xylene. And that said, what's interesting is xylene is the gentler, kinder cousin of uh, toluene, which we used to use. So be smart out there about your, your choices of uh, solvents and how you use them. All right. Does not look like I got a dramatic difference there. So this may be one of those where um, we are going back to the polar solvents. So I'm going to continue this process. I'm going to let this dry. We'll try another solvent and we'll just keep going at this until we get there.